I was a teenager, I know it looks a long time ago now, I had an injury on my ankle while practicing judo, and I broke my ankle. I had to be hospitalized, have a small surgery, wear a long cast for two and a half months, and then after physical therapy, in about four or five months, I was able to run and jump again like nothing had happened. So despite the frustration, the physical limitation, and uh, my mom's desperation for that injury, I knew that this was a temporary event, and that with time, I would have gotten better. Unfortunately, there are other kinds of injuries, like the ones that affect our nervous system, that are not temporary. I leave patients with uh, permanent and often severe disabilities. So our nervous system is not very good at repair itself. And despite this progress in medicine, we still cannot have effective treatment to repair the nervous system when it's damaged. One of the reasons for this is that we do not have a full understanding of the biology of nerve regeneration and degeneration. So I would like to share with you today two entwined ideas. One, an innovative approach that we might have that we might exploit in the future to treat nerve injuries. And the other, the enormous potential that arises when we look at nature in most basic forms and how they have solved biological problems that can inform us on new medical approaches. So let me start with a metaphor. Imagine you build this beautiful electric circuit with very long cables that carry electricity to very distant villages. And now imagine there is a storm and one of the cables gets severed and the village is without electricity. You have two options. One, get a brand new cable from the circuit down to the village, which is very time consuming and in the meantime, the village is suffering. Second, you go there and repair the cable when it's broken, which is a more intuitive way of repair and more effective with the minimal loss for the village. Now let's bring this analogy to the human body. Our brain is like an electric circuit where we have billions of neurons that communicate with electrical current to very distant villages which are our muscles, organs, and tissues. And they do that through tiny cables called axons. Each neuron has its own axons, and these are ax uh, axons. And this axon can be very long, sometimes even one meter, as in our shadic nerve. These axons normally travel together in bundles in structure that we call nerves. So each nerve will have 50 or 100 axons. Now, similarly to a storm that would sever an electric circuit, an injury that will cut one axon or a group of axons will interrupt the communication between the, the central and the village. And this is probably the, the, one of the most dramatic of this effect is seen in, during spinal cord injury, where an injury in the axons in our spine will cause an interruptive communication between the brain and the, the organ and the tissue downstream. And the patient becomes paraplegic, which means loses uh, sensitivity to the lower limbs, or even worse, tetraplegic if the injury is really high in the neck, which means losing sensitivity and movement of the lower limb, torso, and upper limbs. I think it's hard to overemphasize the physical and emotional impact on the patients and their family where these injuries occur. Now, the human neurons do something surprising when they when we cut their axons. They, do not, they tend to do something counterintuitive. They try to regrow the full length, like if you were trying to rebuild the full uh, line from the circuit to the village. But you might wonder now why a skilled neurosurgeon could not stitch together the individual axon. And this is indeed a very promising avenue in neurosurgery. But there are still a lot of limitations the largest of one is the actual the dimension of the axon. I told you that these are tiny cables. The diameter of an axon is about 100 or 1,000 times 
that of a millimeter. And to give you a more realistic reference point, in one of your air, you can probably fit about 50 axons. So the neurosurgeon might probably stitch together the tissue surrounding the axon, maybe the nerve itself, but not the individual axon, as it would be desirable to have a full functional recovery. But now imagine if we had a magical glue that will allow us to do exactly that, to stitch back together one broken axon. Wouldn't that be amazing? And this is where we can learn by looking at nature. Over 50 years ago, scientists found that some animals, including the crayfish, the earthworm, the leech, and the sea slug, they were able to spontaneously repair their injured axon by stitching them back together in a process that is called axonal fusion. Isn't that amazing? But how do they do it? How do they have the superpower? What molecule do they use? This has remained a mystery for five decades. And the reason is that we do not have yet tools to interrogate the genome and the DNA and find the molecules in these organisms. However, about 10 years ago, a game-changing event happened. A combination between engineering and microscopy allowed us to sever one single axon in a different species for which our tools in biology, our knowledge in the genome is phenomenal, is limitless. And this is a small animal, is a nematode, a round worm. His scientific name is Cynorabdatis elegans. Uh, we call it C. elegans or simply the worm. And this is like one millimeter long, the size of a comma of one of the book you're just reading or your abstract book today. And I live everywhere in our garden. What my lab and other lab in the world found, that these animals, some axons in these animals, also have that capacity to repair themselves spontaneously. Now you can imagine this provides an, an enormous experimental platform that will allow us to interrogate how they do it, because now we have tools. And in fact, my laboratory, together with the lab of Professor Yishi Jin at the University of California in San Diego and Professor Ben Pobilevich at the Technion Institute in Israel, have identified what are the molecules that mediate this process. And the, one of the, the mo most important molecules that mediate this are called fusogens. These function exactly as a biological glue that allow this broken axon to get back together. But how about us? Do we have fusogens? Yes, we do. And so do other organisms in the animal kingdom and viruses. However, in us, they do not function in axonal repair. Not yet. But they function in other essential processes, such as the formation of the placenta, our muscles, our bones, some cells in the eyes. And the way they function, even in that case, as a glue, they fuse entire cells together. Okay? However, we now know these molecules. We know that there is a group of molecules that have a phenomenal property. They can repair axons. This is like having a brand new tool, and we now need to learn how to use it, what we can do with it, where does potential of this molecule end. And so my lab is currently using fusogen from different species and see if we now can repair mammalian axon with the idea of providing the surgeon with that glue that is missing. Injuries are involuntary, so we will never be able to fully prevent them. Being able to repair a single axon is a major goal in neurosurgery, and I think it's a reach. And when we will be able to do that, we will be one step closer to make this permanent injury into temporary ones. 
that is a significant and unfortunate trend in the developed world to forget how much basic science can inform us of more developed organisms like us. So I would like to leave you with the thought that if we keep an open mind as a society and medical community, and we are willing to learn from very simple organisms such as a worm, we might find ourselves not only in position to learn more about nature, but also to find cure for diseases that are currently uncurable. Thank you.